What's up, everybody? It's your favorite. You better expect the unexpected over here's favorite nerd. And today we are looking at the Figma Gwendolyn Deluxe version. Now, this is a video game character. And honestly, Figma makes a lot of characters for both anime and video games that really put me in a position where I feel like a fake nerd. I like some video games and I like some anime, but I, I like the type of video games and anime where people that are really into that stuff would be like, oh, you, of course you do, you mainstream nerd. And like, you know, I feel inadequate. Like, I don't know the stuff that they're talking about. I'm like, yeah, dude, I play more. Mortal Kombat and Batman and they're like you haven't played Path of the Daywalkers 4 the Souls Revenge and I'm like no man I'm sorry I don't have a whole lot of time but I think the character designs for all this stuff both the anime stuff and the video game stuff are super cool and I wish I was into it because I really would like to collect this stuff because I think on a character design basis a lot of it is super awesome I just have a hard time getting into it I have a hard time securing the time to watch it my buddy Joe's been on my back about watching this Vampire Hunter D movie that he like lent me like a year ago and I can't even find the time to get that done but to be fair I'm supposed to watch that with him and it's a separate thing but you get what I'm saying right all right so let's talk about accessories and we'll get back to the figure so first and foremost she comes with these wings and they are gorgeous she comes with two of them we're just going to talk about one the paint is all faded from a light blue to a dark blue from a light purple to a dark purple and then the feathers go from a black to almost a, a dark gray and they are beautiful I can't even tell where all of the articulation is, but it seems like there's a ball peg from this set of wings here into the base, and then this one additionally swivels on it, probably to cover down. It's fully painted, so I don't want to scratch any of the paint, but yeah, like that. So that covers down there, and then this is on a ball hinge, you know, for articulation purposes. And then this plugs into the figure and we'll show that here, but we're not going to look at the wings on her when we go through articulation, just because I think it'll ultimately get in the way. To apply the wings, you just pull them directly out of this ball hinge here. And then you take this little placement peg there and remove that and then insert the other wing into the hip. And it's really quite a secure connection and creates a pretty impressive display piece when it's said and done. So she comes with three faces. One namaste face with the eyes closed and the eyelashes painted on, everything else pretty much stylized the same. One, who leaves one brownie in the container and then puts the whole container out on the kitchen counter and doesn't clean the container? You know what I mean? You take the one brownie out of the container, you put that brownie in some in some you know plastic wrap or in some from tin foil, and you clean the dish. This is a society. We're supposed to act civilized to one another. We're not dying from any bubonic plagues anymore, and we're not living like animals. You clean the dish. And Sorry, I got carried away there. And then we have some. Tomorrow it's Christmas. <laughs> Sorry. So yeah, all done very well. And then she comes with a series of hands, left and right posing hands, uh, left and right holding hands for the shield and the sword, uh, fist hands, left and right, and a relaxed hand. So plenty of hand options. And then she also comes with a stand, like a display base adapter and an additional ball hinge, uh, you know, joint. And obviously what good is an adapter for your stand if you don't come with the stand itself, which swivels, hinges, hinges, hinges. And with a little bit of research, and I do mean limited, ladies and gents, this is her cipher spear? Cipher? I think so. And it's really nice. There's like a metallic flecked uh, dark gray for the staff and the like moon symbol here, and then a translucent blue uh, kind of spear tip. Looks really good. And she holds that quite easily by sliding the base of the spear through her hand once you have taken off the end of the spear and then you apply the end of the spear back on for a clean hold. And lastly, her, her shield, which I think is also well done. We have a metallic blue finish on the whole thing and then the yellow star painted and like the little design sculpted in there. You can remove the back handle of the shield and then insert it into her hand easy for me to say and then plug the shield back or the handle back into the shield so let's talk about her the head is on a typical figma ball hinge with a peg that goes into the head and then the ball hinge goes down into the neck now, you lose a little bit of sculpt at extreme angles, but for the most part, it works really well. You get the head all the way down to there, all the way up to there, 
and then the swivel, confused dog look, pretty much whatever you want to do. Works extremely well. It's extremely effective. Um, it's just as effective as a double ball peg or anything else, if not more so from time to time. It's just that this sort of approach doesn't always work with, with certain character designs. Now for the head itself, let's zoom in a bit and take a look at some of these details. The eyes are painted beautifully. Nice variation in the shades of purple in the eyes. We have the reflective light in the eyes. The lips are painted. Eyebrows are painted. Eyelashes are painted. And the eyelids are actually painted. The hair is all clean. And then we have the crown or the hair band with the crown on it, which is painted black and gold. The blue is faded from a light blue to a dark blue. And then we have the feathers on the side of her of her the black feathers on the side as well looks really good and then we had the gold necklace kind of sculpted in and painted onto the uh the neck the choker or whatever it is and then we have i'm guessing the exact same situation for the upper um the upper chest articulation which is to say a ball hinge with a peg swivel both at the top and bottom so you get a great range no issues it doesn't feel like we have anything for the lower body, but I don't think you ultimately need it, especially on a character that's kind of this petite. So you can get her over to there, up to there, side to side. You get a little bit more on this side that might be from just manipulation of the joint. You have the bow sculpted, you have the blue down the middle painted, and you have the gold band sculpted and painted. So no issues. Now for the, for the shoulders, they're ball pegs that come out almost immediately to a ball hinge so you get a little bit of play there but not a whole lot however i think for what it is it's a good choice then you have a ball hinge shoulder a little bit of breakup in the sculpt but not the worst thing in the world it allows for more articulation but for sculpt it might have been better to have the arm come up a bit more great range though all the way up and around swivel there at the shoulder both inside the torso and at the ball hinge I'm not sure if you get an additional. No, you don't. Doesn't seem like it anyway. Ball hinge for the elbow, which gets you way past 90 degrees, and a swivel. And then for the wrist, we have a ball hinge that works beautifully all the way in and out. And if we swivel it, up and down. So that works extremely well. And then we have the this piece which is like a cover up piece for the pelvis black white silver buttons painted on the wings which are removable you know depending on what wings you want to put in there they're painted beautifully light blue fades to dark blue light purple fades to dark purple and then the black fades to a gray just like the the larger wings because they're supposed to be you know like that's where they plug in we'll take a look at that a little later on but they're just ball joints right there um for the back of the figure, that's where we have like the, I don't know, like the tutu, I guess, for lack of a better term. And the nice wrinkles and stuff folded up in there. Decent sculpt underneath with the skirt and such. And then the, the drawers, I guess. And then we have T-jointed ball joints for hips. I don't think they're dropped down. And I think they're like, uh, they come down here and then they plug up into this center joint. So you get them out to there, which is a decent range, honestly, given all the stuff that she kind of carries on her hips. And then forward and back to there, this is a softer plastic here, so it gets out of the way a bit, which is nice. And then we have a thigh swivel at the, at the ball joint. And then we have the boots sculpted beautifully, blue metallic paint, silver paint, ball hinge knees with a little kind of bit cut out of the back of the thigh so that you should get a really great bend out of the knee. And then we have these wings on the side of her legs that fade from a blue to a purple that look beautiful. Metallic blue and metallic silver paint on the shins and calves. And which brings us down to the feet, which is a ball hinge with a peg into the calf and into the foot. So you get an ankle tilt down to there, up to there, and a rocker. It's not the best rocker in the world, but it is there. And that's pretty much her. There she is from the back size wise i don't really have a figure figure that it makes sense to compare it to but she's just a little over five inches pretty much to the top of her head five and a quarter to the top of her crown final thoughts wise i think it's a beautiful piece the only criticisms i really have is i, I wish you got a, a little bit more play out of the torso i think it, she would have really benefited from an additional joint 
Uh, and it, it may be there, I just don't want to put too much friction on it, but an additional joint there at the pelvis into the abdomen. She does, like when you want to pose her and stuff, she does have a tendency to be a little stiff. I also wish that uh, the articulation in the wings worked just the slightest bit better where I could really have them up like at this joint down here at the bottom, I just have a hard time getting them posed like, you know, really up in the air. But as you can see, I mean, nothing prevents you from having a really dynamic posed uh, figure on your shelf. So they're, they're small complaints or criticisms, but they're, they are mine. But the paint is beautiful, the sculpt is beautiful, the accessories are awesome, and each one of them adds a ton of display presence to the figure. The articulation is stellar, with the exception of I wish I could have got a little bit more out of that torso. And she's a lot of fun to pose and display, so I really don't have a whole lot negative to say about this. I think that if you're a fan of this game or a fan of this character, you'll absolutely be in love. And if you're a fan of just cool figures, you're going to be in love as well. My, my biggest complaint is that I had to deal with my daughter's mouth regarding it. Whose pretty princess is that? You're a pretty princess. Thank you. You win this round. And she's getting quick, that one. Anyway, thanks to Mike for letting me take a look at all of these figures, and thank you for listening. Thanks for watching. Until next time, take care.